But you guys got another mini PC review here for you. This one is the Nipoji, I think you pronounce it like that. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have a take a look at this one. This has a high-end Ryzen processor in here, 16 gigs of RAM. It does have an SSD in it and not an NVMe drive, but we'll take a closer look at the specs in a second. But you can see here, this is the model uh, AMO2. There's quite a few manufacturers that make this one. Comes in grey, and again, uh, it does have the specs on the screen here. Windows 11 Pro, uh, the Ryzen 7 3750H, 16 gigs of DDR4, 512 gigs of of SSD and the Radeon RX Vega 10. The graphics on this is pretty decent for gaming. So if you want to play some games or retro games, you can do, I'll show you those in a little bit. Does have some ports on here. Good design quality on this, very good build quality as well. I do like the overall look of this uh, particular type of mini PC. But we'll take a closer look at it in more detail. This is exactly what you can expect to get inside the box. You can have your back plate for uh, the mount on the back of your monitor you've got some screws here uh, you've got your power adapter and your power brick and also your hdmi cable and your user manual so you've got everything that you need to get up and running the user manual has got pictures and text in different language so it's easy to understand and easy to set up so if you have never used one of these before it's pretty straightforward it's just a a PC in a mini little box here. But you can see here on the front, we have a USB type C on the front power button and our audio port there where we can plug in our headphones or whatever it is we want to put in there. We've also got some nice ventilation. I do like that design on the sides here for ventilation and the same thing on the other side. And on the back is where all your ports are. So let's take a look at them. So we've got a DC input here for your power. You've got a DP input and a HDMI as well. These are for your uh, displays. And we also have four USB ports here, 3.0 USB ports, and also that one gigabit Ethernet LAN port on there as well. So let's take a look inside here. On the bottom, we've got our mounting area here. But I'm going to open this up so you can see inside to see what sort of parts you're going to get in here. So I do love this uh, effect on here and that design that looks really nice. One of the nicer looking type of mini PCs that I've seen. So inside here, we're going to get access to the RAM slots. You can see there's two of them in here and there's 16 gigs of RAM. You could upgrade that. I've never heard of that RAM uh, company before, but as you can see, that is the RAM inside there. We do have a uh, SATA on here as well. This is not an NVMe drive, which is, I think, a little bit of a letdown for this device. I would have liked to have seen an NVMe drive in here. I don't know what the brand is. I tried to have a look, but it's that uh, heatsink is molded on there. And I think it's probably to do with uh, the same company as the RAM. So I'll do a speed test of the actual drive. And as I've said, I do think it let it down a little bit here with the speed because it is only an SSD and not an NVMe drive. And I do think it would have been much better to have put an NVMe drive in here instead of an SSD. Uh, drive there's no room for expansion so you can't put any more drives in here there's no drive bay it's just that ssd so it has got uh, 512 gigs so you can upgrade that if you wanted to so i run a cinebench here on here for it on the multi-core cinebench let's have a look and take a look at the thermals to see how it fares also we can take a look to see if there's any sort of thermal throttling or anything like that with this device now, I've seen uh, a lot of these mini PCs perform pretty well with this, and I've also seen some have thermal throttling issues and also uh, temperature issues. So we'll see what this one uh, works out like. So I'm going to run this and let it run in the background, and hopefully we'll get some sort of idea of how it performs and how it uh, works under load. So I'm going to be putting this through its paces today to see how that temperature fares on this device to see whether it gets hot and whether we get any sort of thermal throttling here. And you can see the device is up to 100 degrees Celsius. It's jumping up to there as well. You can see it going up. And uh, it, as long as it's not going red and it's thermal throttling, then uh, you know, you're know you okay. But it is getting a little bit hot. I would like to see those thermals a little bit cooler than uh, what it's getting to here. Now, remember your sort of running tasks on this which is quite intensive and if you was rendering out a 4k uh, video or a 1080p video then you can expect these temperatures to get to this sort of level uh, when you're doing this sort of stuff because it's using all of the threads and all of the cores uh, to run this test 
Let's do some sort of GPU test here and I'll run a quick test here so you can see what sort of temps and results you can expect from this. So I'm just going to quickly run this benchmark here. And as you can see, we've got a score of 1996 running at 1080p on medium settings. And again, you can see the shadings at medium, textures medium, and a bunch of other uh, settings on there, which I set. And I'll try and keep these the same, but not too bad uh, for this particular device, which means you can uh, play some games on this, which is pretty nice. Now also run Geekbench and you can see the single core 868 and the multi-core was 3,483. So this is quite a powerful mini PC. You're going to be able to do all your normal tasks like office work, watching 4K content and also rendering videos and also be able to play some games. So let's run the complete uh, benchmark here on this so we can get a score of this and uh, we'll see what it is now you can see here four cores eight threads on this one and the total score was 12,784 which isn't too bad for a mini pc so it's quite a powerful little mini pc the problem with mini pcs is just the same as laptops it's dissipating the heat and getting rid of the heat and that comes down to the cooling solutions on these mini pcs now if you're wondering about 4k content or streaming content yes it can handle this very easily as you can see here there's no jerkiness, it's very smooth, and there's no problems at all, which means you could use Plex on here and stream your content via Plex if you wish, which is a bonus if a, people are looking for a some sort of Plex server where they can play their Plex movies. You'll be able to do it with this powerful little mini PC. Again, let's take a look at some retro gaming here. It can handle this no problem at all, as you can see here, no problems playing retro games. I've got another one here I just want to play here. And again, no problem at all silky smooth playing these games as you would expect so for a retro machine you could do that no problem at all now if you want to play more intensive games you could do this with this machine as well like counter strike or valorant or even uh you know fortnite and things like that you could play uh, games of that quality this is dirt rally 4 and we're playing this at 1080p around about medium sort of settings and it was having no problems at all so I just wanted to show you the thermals after doing all these testings and playing games and stuff. And you can see it's now creeped up into the red zone. But I've pretty much tortured this mini PC and there's still no thermal throttling here. So it's done pretty well. But just be a bit more mindful when you're using these things. They're not an out and out replacement for a gaming desktop PC to make it uh, do all of those things on a constant basis for six hours at a time. But that can be said for many mini PCs out there. I would have liked to have seen an NVMe drive in here and I would have liked to have seen those thermals just a little bit cooler than what they were in these tests there, just to keep them in, say, maybe like the 70, 80 mark rather than getting into the 100 Celsius. Now, another thing I've seen people mention in a comment section is about how expensive these mini PCs are. But when you consider what they're actually doing and how small they are, you can understand why they are so expensive because you are playing uh, you know, games and rendering videos and, you know, doing it as a Plex server and things like that. And they're capable of all those things in a small little device. So you can understand why things are so expensive. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. A quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Have a lovely Sunday. Bye for now.